We just arrived here at Teotihuacan in New Mexico City. This is the grandest, largest site in all of Central America. Probably the most impressive site here. We're going to first go to the Temple of Quetzalcoatl and then to the Moon and the Sun Pyramids. And we're going to look at any clues to any earlier civilizations here because there are dates for this place that go back to 1400 BC actual carbon date and that was found in some of the tunnels and around the general area there were once 250,000 people living here apparently and it kind of got founded they say around you know 300 AD onwards it may have been around 200 BC onwards there's debates about that but it could even be much much earlier but the carbon dating does prove that there was a very early settlement here that could have been responsible for building the pyramids it could well have been the Olmec because we know they came out this way and we're gonna look at some sites to prove certainly that they did. It could even be the legendary end of the fourth world and beginning of the fifth world when the Olmecs died out and they, were, and they moved westwards and created Teotihuacan. The technology here is similar. We find underground waterways. We find um, even Olmec style jade carvings in the museum and we find the same kind of technology. So let's get in there, let's take a, a look. But first, we want to go to the enigmatic pyramid of Quetzalcoatl. And this is amazing because this is where they've recently found some tunnels. And also, this could be the earliest part of the entire complex. So, this could be the thing, the site that actually dates back to 1400 BC or even earlier. And again, it could even be pre Olmec, it could be uh, part of the Olmec culture. Could have been another culture, contemporary with the Olmec. I mean, the, the jury's still out exactly who built this. And the archaeologists really don't have any idea. But the Teotihuacan influence goes a long, long way. It stretches across all of Central America, right down into Honduras and, very, and various other countries. So here we are. Let's take a look at this amazing site of Teotihuacan in Mexico. So we're just in the plaza next to the Pyramid of Quetzalcoatl, but we just, this was discovered in 1990 in this lower kind of subterranean area. And it's got some beautiful murals on it, so we're gonna get, see if we can get zoom in and get a couple of shots. It's called Edificio Sur uh, of the Sun. So just behind me, you can see some of the structure of the Pyramid of Quetzalcoatl, the, the older construction just back here. And this is really fascinating because this is underground tunnels which have been discovered here recently. And there's even been remnants and recordings of radon gas so it's almost got a radioactive element to this place and this could be the oldest part of the entire complex we actually go up and you'll see that we have stone on stone contact in, in the front of this thing okay. as compared to you know this the heavy use of, of mortar which is what generally what we find so it's possible that this is the older structure here and that uh, then it was re rebuilt later but i think they built this little temple in front of it so that you can't you literally can't see it it's it's like it's a hidden thing and it's only for the initiates who are allowed to go wow. up and over and down to go there it is so behind me here you can see the pyramid of quetzalcoatl this i think is the most sacred area of teotihuacan recently they found some burials under here they had cranial deformation um, suggesting this is where the elites were buried said to have been built by the great god Quetzalcoatl. This is around a lot longer before the king Quetzalcoatl from Tula. So we see the imagery here, we see the plumed serpents, we see serpents moving across each level. Also under here there are tunnels, there are potential caves that link with the other pyramids and to me this is just the most important part of this site and I'm just delighted to have a chance to come here in February 2016. More excavations being carried out so more is still to be discovered here so this is just uh, as far as we can get as close as we can get but you can see the intricacy of the stonework and the symbolism is really quite profound. So behind me this long pathway is the famous Avenue of the Dead 
It stretches for two miles between the Temple of Quetzalcoatl all the way up to the Moon Pyramid with the Sun Pyramid part of the way up. Some people say it used to be filled with water. This whole area was like a lake city and you'd use boats to get around from one place to another. The alignment's also interesting. It's 15 degrees off north. This is 15 degrees east, 15.25 degrees to be exact off north, which has got a very, so that's a very interesting orientation and people have suggested it could be aligned to certain star systems or it could even represent the Milky Way. There's different theories have been put forward about this. I suggest it may have been representing the old North Pole where that used to be um, and it could be a geodetic marker marking a much earlier epoch which is similar to the kind of thing uh, we do find in Egypt. But also at the end here we find this great stone just below the moon pyramid which to me is like a monolith, it's like an Olmec head. So this could be a symbol that this was indeed an Olmec site. So we're in the main plaza of Teotihuacan we're just below the steps of the Moon Pyramid. But it's this stone here, which I, I first w sort of noticed properly in 2009. I, I saw it in 2003 as well, but it really grabbed my attention because I believe this is like the geodetic marker, the geodetic marker of the whole site. And this is like the omphalai, the navel of potentially the whole of the ancient Mexican world. And here it is. seeing here which you can see on this image it's like a goddess a water goddess figurine called the goddess Chalchikitluku Tlaloc's companion who is the god of storm and lightning and this would have been surrounded by water this entire complex everywhere you can see here was water uh, they, oh. they, they used to get they used to get boats around it uh, oh, yeah. and it was completely covered and they, under the, even under the pyramids there was water coming in and out pumping them. a bit like exactly like the Giza Plateau same oh, kind of yeah. system so this was like a major kind of water site people don't realize that yeah I think yeah I think it was for that I think it had other purposes as well some people say it's like a metal or gold purification sense a bit like a Tiwanaku oh. but I think it was more ceremonial um, because they revered water very much in the ancient world unlike now we don't really revere it in the same way but you know, I think that was one of the things, and this this is really interesting because I thought I always saw this as an omphalai, as a kind of um, axis really a navel of the whole site, and this suggests it could well be that it could be the ultimate water goddess sitting at the centre, and like all the energy and ceremonies directed outwards from this particular spot. It may have been a bit over there to be more centralised, but who knows? Just behind me, in the distance there, is the Pyramid of the Sun. Now this has the same base size, very close to the Great Pyramid of Giza. Although it's nowhere near as tall, it does have the same footprint as the Great Pyramid of Giza. The pyramid we're standing on now, the Moon Pyramid, one side of it is roughly 500 feet long. The other side is something like 450, so it's not an exact square but it is a beautiful step pyramid it's been reconstructed behind me you can see some of the mounds that are still pyramids that have yet to be excavated and this is what this would have looked like originally and you can see that from the very early photos and then you can see the avenue of the dead going all the way down behind me roughly two miles long this whole place would have been full of water and there's also what's interesting is very thick mica sheets mineral mica were found underneath both the moon and the sun pyramid and or some of it was sold off but they found that most of it came from Brazil so it proves there was a connection between here and South America which could also connect the Viracocha and the Quetzalcoatl myths and even the great ancient cultures building these sites across the planet and so the mica and what was that useful now some people say it could have been aesthetic but it also acts as an insulator so it could have been used for electrical purposes it could have been used to resonate certain things and it could have had other uh, other other special scientific purposes and it's thought now that this could even have been a great gold and metal ore producing plant which that could have been used for combined with the water not dissimilar to what we find at Tiwanaku which is one of the theories there and Pumapunku of course so it's just a real delight for me to be up here and behind me you can see the moon pyramid I've not been here since 2009 I first came here in 2003 and absolutely delighted I feel like as high as a kite 
something about this site, it really is the place in myth and tradition where the gods came down and created man. And it's also said that this site was built by giants, like many of the other sites we find across Mexico and Central America. And this is interesting because archaeologists still don't really know who built this. Who built this incredible major complex. There's some carbon dating goes back to 1400 BC, which is a lot earlier than uh, the traditional, which is around 200 BC. So this is absolutely fascinating in my opinion, because it really does put this into a different context. The fact that you've got an Olmecoid kind of female goddess figure here at the dead center of the site absolutely fascinates me. You can see her just behind me. And, um, and also we have the incredible technology that's hidden underneath these pyramids, the tunnels, there's the, the metal spheres that were found here under the temple of Quetzalcoatl. We have the mica, we have multiple burials with elongated skulls and trapan skulls, which to me suggests an Olmec connection because they were the ones who originated in this part of the world cranial deformation and we know cranial deformation was around in South America long before that quite possibly two or three thousand BC and so this is up to me this just suggests especially with the mica connection linking it with Brazil that indeed there were direct connections between these two great pyramid building cultures these strange stones here these are very odd they've got what looks like serpents or just circles on them really and you can see the serpent form there it's moving around on top of the rock there like a dragon or serpent's paw and they look like glyphs these really do look like glyphs actually and these are probably just the frontage of the great pyramid of the sun you can see here this is interesting, this just looks like, like the plumes of a serpent which is something we find obviously on the great Quetzalcoatl pyramid.